Hello everyone, my name is Reed and I am a teacher who is very new to Minecraft EDU. I have just uh, been learning about it the past few weeks on my own and with the help of a tech coach here at school. And I'm going to create a little tutorial for you um, to help you along. Uh, this tutorial is intended for those teachers who have never used Minecraft EDU before or have never used Minecraft before. Uh, and therefore have no background knowledge or experience uh, with this learning tool. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and click Minecraft EDU Launcher, which is down in my dock. The first window that's going to pop up um, is the Minecraft EDU Launcher. Uh, and this is where you're going to want to start by pressing the Server Launcher button. And this little mini window, this mini launcher, pops up and I usually keep this open in the background because every so often I do restore launcher. Uh, and then the server launcher uh, window will pop up. Uh, there are two options here for players new to Minecraft and those familiar with Minecraft. If you're completely new to Minecraft and Minecraft EDU, I would introduce it to yourself and also to your students uh, through the tutorial world. So you can go ahead and click start server with tutorial world. Now it does take just a little while for the window to pop up and what you want to do once it does is keep an eye on this little area here uh, to check to see when the server is running. Okay, Now you can see the server is ready. The uh, red button has turned to a green button or a green dot and you can see that you're connecting uh, to the server using this address. This is where you can go back to the mini launcher and now click restore launcher. Uh, once you've restored the launcher, click Start Minecraft EDU and Launch. And it's important that you keep this uh, back window running uh, because very soon it's going to ask you to insert the server address. So once this window opens, go ahead and type in your name, click your gender and continue. And it'll give you a single player option or multiplayer option. Uh, in most cases, you're going to be playing multiplayer uh, with your class. Uh, and this is where it's going to start scanning uh, for games on the local network. Go ahead and click Direct Connect. This is where you can find the location to type in the server address. You can see here that the server address that I've been using has already populated. Uh, that is because the address has been saved. If this is your first time uh, connecting, you're going to have to type in uh, the address that has been gener generated for you and then uh, click join server. In most other cases, it's going to be saved exactly as it was um, the most recent time that you entered um, those numbers and then just join server. Again, you can log in as a student or you can log in as a teacher. If you're a student, um, you can go ahead and uh, select your appearance. Uh, your students will also be able to do the same thing. Um, they will not be able to log in as a teacher because you will already have set a password. Um, so then you just type in your password and it'll log you into the tutorial world. Now once in this tutorial world, uh, students will go through uh, like a mini obstacle course or a mini scavenger hunt um, and, and just get used to the basics of moving around. As you can see here, um, there's W, S, A, and D. Uh, if you put your, your three fingers, I'm sorry, uh, three fingers on uh, A, W, and D, uh, this will help you move around. W will make your character move forward. S will make them walk backward. A will kind of shimmy them or guide them to the left, and D, again, guide them to the right. Uh, if you have access to a mouse, uh, my students and I have found that uh, having your right hand on the mouse uh, is a little bit easier than using a trackpad. Uh, the mouse controls what you see. So right now I'm guiding my mouse to the right, sliding my mouse to the left. If I want to look up, all I need to do is push my mouse up on the table. If I want to look down, push my mouse down on the table. 
My body has not moved. I'm not touching A, W, S, or D at all. I'm just sliding the mouse. You can see I'm turning around 360 degrees. If I wanted to walk forward, I would press W, and I would walk in the direction of the crosshairs. So you can see that the crosshairs are split between these two signs. If that's where I wanted to walk, I would just hit W. If I want to turn to the right, turn my vision to the right, slide my mouse all the way around. So you can do this at the same time where you're walking and guiding your view with the mouse. I'm just holding down W right now, so I'm walking at the same speed and just guiding where I'm walking with my mouse. Now the other thing that you can do is jump. Okay, By hitting the space bar, okay, you jump up and down. Those are the basics that your students are going to need to know for uh, the moment. Um, I will teach you a little bit more about some of the things that you can do in creative mode and some of the things that uh, students can also do in creative mode and we'll go over the teacher menu in just a second. Um, but this is a great tutorial world that just takes you through um, a little world that was created uh, by Joel and it will uh, give you opportunity just to work on your, your basic maneuvering skills within Minecraft. Uh, it takes a while but uh, you do get used to it pretty quickly. If I want to get out of this world, I can click Escape. When I click Escape, it'll give me the option to go back to the game or I can disconnect. Uh, oftentimes I'll click Escape if I want to make the uh, screen full um, or if I need to reduce it to a smaller size. Uh, in this case, I want to disconnect. So I'm going to quit game. And then I'm going to stop the server. I can just uh, quit because I do not want to save any progress that was made inside the tutorial world. Once again, I can go back to Restore Launcher now. Same thing as before. Start the Minecraft EDU Server Launcher. And then the secondary window will be prompted. Now, after you've spent some time in the tutorial world, the next thing you can do is just have a play around um, in a new world. Uh, when you create a new world, there will be three options. One, you can generate a random world, you can generate a world from a seed, or you can generate a completely flat world. Uh, in this case, we're going to generate a completely flat world, uh, just so I can teach you some of the basic skills of what teachers can do uh, using the teacher menu within Minecraft EDU. So I'll start the server with a new world. Again, you can see that I'm using the same server address as I was before. The server is now ready. I can go ahead and click Restore Launcher and then start Minecraft EDU and launch. Again, I'm going to go ahead and type my name in, just like I did before, click multiplayer, and then double check to make sure that the server address is correct, direct connect, yes, it matches, and now join server. I'm a teacher, I'll go ahead and put in my password. Now I'm going to hit escape, and then make this window a little bit bigger and I can minimize the mini launcher and then go back to the game. So as you can see this is a completely flat world. There are some benefits and drawbacks to operating within this world. Now again W to go forward, S to go backwards, A to move to the right, D, I'm sorry, A to move to the left, D to move to the right. And to move your field of vision, you can use the mouse or you can use the trackpad. If I look down, you can see that I have uh, a block now highlighted in my crosshairs. 
if I click on the mouse, okay, it'll try to dig out. However, I do not have that ability yet. Okay. What I can do is go into uh, the teacher menu first, and you do this by clicking P. So this is going to be a very important button to remember. Aside from A, S, A, and D, the other uh, keys that you will need to remember are P and E. P for the teacher menu. The first thing that I tend to do is click creative mode. Uh, creative mode allows you to fly and it gives you unlimited blocks in the inventory. The other thing that I uh, prefer doing right away is increasing my movement speed. So when I uh, when I fly or when I'm walking around I can do this at a speed that's uh, a little bit faster than normal which makes it more efficient. Um, this is inside the personal area of the teacher menu. Inside the world settings it allows you to change a few other things such as the difficulty level, the weather effects, uh, day and night, and, and some of the other um, options that you have. It also allows you to change the game mode from uh, Minecraft EDU to survival or creative. When I'm with my students I tend to put them in creative uh, and that's so that they have access to any block or any tool that they want. It just makes it a little bit more efficient for them not to go and have to mine some of those um, objects uh, and, and create them and uh, they can just get on to the learning task and the outcomes um, right away. Uh, I prefer not to have day and night on, uh, a lot of weather effects, animals, those things uh, don't bother me too much. Uh, player settings. Uh, you can allow student respawning, which means that uh, wherever you enter the world, that's called your spawn point. Uh, and students, if they fall off um, or fall into a, a crevice or they get stuck or they're lost or they're too far away and they need to uh, navigate back to a centralized location that they're familiar with, they can do so very easily um, just um, by allowing them to. So you can just click this box. Um, I, I do have students building, um, muting students. And if I don't want students chatting or they're not using the chat option uh, appropriately, I might mute all students. Um, free students, this is huge for me. Uh, anytime I need to make an announcement to the students or I ask them to reflect on something um, to get back to the learning outcomes, I, I click freeze. Um, and then all students have been frozen, uh, their eyes and ears are on me, I can make the announcement and then unfreeze them and then they can go ahead and proceed with what other, whatever tasks they were working on beforehand. Uh, I do allow students to resurface as well. Um, once again, if they um, are stuck in holes or, or some other location um, by accident, they can, they can easily resurface. Uh, Player management right now, there are no other players on the server. However, when other students are on the server, you can see a list of them here, and you can do a slew of, uh, of, of things to them. Um, very useful if you want to uh, individualize uh, resources or opportunities for certain players. Uh, the assignment, uh, go ahead and click the title and the assignment description, and then it tends to appear right up here in your left-hand corner. Um, throughout their, their game. Give, um, if you need to, if you're in Minecraft EDU mode uh, and you need to, to give certain blocks to students, you can do so just by typing in uh, the first few letters. If I wanted to get stand, sandstone, I could go ahead and give uh, 30 blocks and I would, maybe would give it to Mr. Reed in this case or I could give it to all. Um, right now I'm the only uh, student or the only teacher inside um, this world so I can give to that player that says you are given 30 blocks of sandstone. You can give to all if you need to. However, if the students are in creative mode, they have access to um, all items to begin with. So I don't really use this feature too much because I keep my students in creative mode. Um, this building tools option on the far right is also a, a very important uh, tool that I use and I'll show you why. Uh, as I mentioned before, um, you can see here 
uh, I have my crosshairs on a block and that block is highlighted. If I click on my mouse when the uh, outline is highlighted, it's going to dig there. And that's with the left click. So a left click to dig. Now you can see that in um, my tool belt down here, I have given myself uh, 30 blocks of sandstone. Um, if I want to lay a block there, um, I will have to highlight it. You can see now it is not the sandstone is not highlighted in my tool belt. Now it is. The way I'm controlling that is on my mouse I'm using the scroll wheel. So the scroll wheel will take you through any items that you have in your tool belt. In this case I have no other items aside from sandstone. Now in order to lay a block you right click. If you right click um, on top, if I move forward a little bit, you can see that my crosshairs are within um, the outline of a block. If I right click it's going to lay a block on top. Uh, so the, the crosshairs will, will give you an indication of where your block is going to be laid. If I want to add a block to the side here, again, I have to make sure that my crosshairs are within the side of that block and it's highlighted. And I right click again. If my crosshairs are on top of the block, that's where the block is going to be laid when I right click. Um, and if I want to destroy uh, that block, I can left click and it'll be gone. So you use the right click and the left click. Now, one of the cool things that I introduced earlier was uh, in creative mode you can fly. And I just hit P to bring up the uh, teacher menu. I can hit P again uh, to close out that menu. And if I hit the space bar once, I will jump. If I double tap on the space bar, I levitate. And if I hold down the space bar I will fly. Okay? I don't go down, but I can move my field of vision and I can fly just by uh, pressing on W right now. So as you can see I'm flying. If I want to go down, I can hold shift and it'll come back to the ground. So again, double tap and hold down the space bar to fly, shift to come down. Uh, flying is very useful not only for teachers but also for students because it will give um, all of us just a, a, an aerial perspective of the world um, and, and allow us to kind of uh, utilize our space um, in a more purposeful manner. Now if I go back into P, uh, the other thing that is super important inside the teacher menu is building tools. Um, and this is where long distance build um, and build mode um, should be enabled. This is where you can, can create. So if I click out of here and I fly up a little bit, uh, before I had to be quite close to a block for it to be highlighted. And if I wanted to uh, dig, for example, um, if I could see uh, that the block was highlighted and it was within my crosshairs, I would just hit the left click and uh, it would dig. In a long build mode, I can fly up a little bit further, and you can see that in the distance there, still within my crosshairs, a block has been highlighted. So with long build, I have the option to still dig holes and lay blocks with a right click from further distances. And this is super efficient when uh, a teacher is maybe setting up a world um, to do this in a more efficient manner. The other cool thing that teachers should be aware of is uh, what you can do with your fill and clear tool. So if I wanted to lay uh, several blocks down all at once and this would be a large rectangular layer, I would right click once and you can see that it turns to a red block. Now, that can be considered like one of the four corners. 
the opposite corner in a rectangle or a square will be filled up into the point to where my crosshair is. Now if I right click again, you'll see all of that fills in. This can be very useful when you're generating structures. Um, if you want to build a border, for example, uh, you can do so again with this uh, fill and clear tool. So if I wanted to try and get on this line here, I could give one block a, towards the horizon and then come down and right click again and it fills very quickly and this can be a border. Again, you're going to have to make sure though that you're in the same column or the same row when you do that. Uh, the other tool that's uh, very useful um, to know about or the other key is the inventory and the inventory is what you have access to down here in your tool belt. Um, and that uh, is the E key, or the E button. So if you hit E, you can see that there are uh, many tools and many blocks that you have access to. And if you want to b uh, bring one of these uh, blocks down to your tool belt, you can just click, drag, and click again. And then it'll be down there. Uh, page one has many blocks. Uh, page two is where you're going to find your Minecraft EDU blocks. Now, these are the key blocks uh, to use while you're creating a world. Uh, the ones that I rely on most are information blocks, uh, the information sign, the border block, and the spawn block. Um, I can hit uh, e again to take me out of my inventory. If I go back into P, my teacher menu, I'm going to take off the fill or clear tool. I'm going to stay on build mode and long distance build. Uh, one of the cool things uh, that you can do is kind of corral your students into a, uh, an area by using border blocks. Now once again, down here in my tool belt, you'll see I have several blocks now that I've, uh, I've drugged down there. Uh, one of them being the border block here. So if I want to highlight or select that border block, I'm going to have to use the scroll wheel uh, on my mouse. So I'm going to hit escape and scroll down until the border block is highlighted. Uh, to lay that block, I can click uh, the right click button on the mouse and add blocks one by one. Now, this is going to take a while if I am trying to build a rectangle or a square to keep my students within so they don't wander off to the horizon. But there is a, a quicker option that you can use to um, build a border. If you go back into the teacher menu by pressing P and you look at this place amount, if I place, let's say, 30 at a time and click set, that means that any time I place blocks, I'm going to place 30 of them. Now at first this can be problematic because if I right click right now, I'm going to have 30 blocks and considering where my crosshairs are pointed, those 30 blocks are going to be generated vertically, which is not what I want to do. Okay, I don't want a vertical border. So the first thing I'm going to have to do is go back to the uh, teacher menu. And I'll just go back to place one block at a time. I'll click set, and I will place one border block. Okay, I can use this as my base block. Now that I have my one border block set, go back into the teacher menu, click 30 okay, or 40 or 45 and set it. Now if I want to add 30 blocks okay, in this direction, all I had to do was click the 30 block uh, set um, 
And to do so, just make sure that I align my crosshairs in the correct direction, uh, and then right click. And then I, when I right click, 30 blocks have been extended behind me. Okay. If I want to build a quick square for my students to operate within, it doesn't take too much. I just need to make sure that my crosshairs are pointed in the direction I want my blocks to extend back or up 30. As you can see, I've built a little border now. Now, with this border wall, I can fly over it, I can jump over it, however, students can't. Uh, so this is a very useful tool. Um, the spawn block, uh, if I dig a hole here, oops, I'm sorry, I forgot that I'm still on 30 blocks, so I need to go back and change that to one, and then go ahead and dig a hole and you can see that I have highlighted my spawn block here and if I right click I'm going to lay the spawn block whenever students come into the world they will come in at this point and that means that they'll be able to use this space and be able to create whatever they want to however they will not be able to jump, dig, um, or break through this border wall here. The other very useful Minecraft EDU blocks that uh, I, I enjoy using are information signs and these information blocks. And what I tend to do is I will click E and bring down a build disallow block, which means that students cannot build or they cannot break um, anything uh, above that block. So I'm going to dig uh, a hole here and I will use my scroll wheel to uh, highlight the build disallow, right click and lay it down. Use my scroll wheel, go over to the information sign and lay it on top and then an information block and lay this on top. Now this information block uh, I find a very powerful tool uh, for teachers to ensure that the learning outcomes are met that clues, reflective questions, or provocations are highlighted um, so that all of their interaction within Minecraft EDU ties back to the learning outcomes. So if I wanted the students to, um, to focus on, uh, let's say, the PYP attitude of cooperation, okay, I would type in cooperation and then ask some sort of reflective question. How are you and your Peers cooperating to meet the learning outcomes. Okay, I would close. Now, if I'm walking away and I come around and I see that, oh, there's an information block here, uh, students would right click and then this information block would prompt them with a reflective question um, for them to consider as they continue their learning task. Um, if I go back into the teacher menu, um, the other thing that I can do is teleport myself to, uh, to spawn. Um, so if, for example, I'm far away or, I've, or I myself have been uh, stuck somewhere and I need to come back to the spawn point, I can click on that and as you can see I'm right back at the spawn block that I had uh, initially laid. Um, that's pretty much it. I, I hope that uh, some of these uh, tools that took me so long to, uh, to learn uh, don't take you quite as long and um, oops, sorry, I went down below the earth and, uh, and that you find this uh, video useful. The other thing that uh, I just wanted to mention before uh, we go is if by chance you do make a mistake and you start laying some of these blocks vertically um, that were set at a certain quantity uh, inside the building tool um, you do have this option where you can undo last fill or undo last place um, in this case I don't want to click it uh, just because the last place that I have made was the information sign but after I extended those 30 blocks vertically I could have just clicked undo last fill and um, those would have been erased Alright, thank you very much for listening. I hope this tutorial has helped you out.